So we're now in our 15th season with Bill Grad. We are predicted to finish in 7th place, which is honestly starting to feel like a formality at this point. Even if our former player is in the middle dream 11 as the goalkeeper, which is awkward. We are making 1.4 million in sponsorship income, which is great. It tells us that we are making good money and the league is actually getting better as a whole in that regards. With our facilities being as good as they are, we're hoping that our youth intake will be getting better and better. I just wish I was able to upgrade the youth facilities as well so I can do more for us in the long run. With mid table finish expected and then to go on to be a top half team, we're starting to feel like a team that can generally start to do some damage and that for me is the best news. We also have a very strong squad in the under 18s level and we could start to call up some players from the youth team to get some first mid experience anytime we want to. It's exciting. We have a rather kind start to the year and we're hoping that the fixtures we have here will be able to let us do well in the competitions coming up. We're also going to go straight into the fourth qualifying round of the Europa Conference League. We're really hoping we can get to the group stage this year because it's the one thing I've not been able to do in this team in this save is get to the group stage of the Europa Conference League. But yet we've been able to get to the group stage of the Champions League on the first of asking. But we've not been in the group stage of the Europa Conference League in the last three years. So it's awkward to say the least. So first thing I'm going to do is look at the development center and actually show you that we've got more players now turning up in the first team candidates list. Five players right now. It's ridiculous. And the under 19s level is looking really good. We've also got 17 players out on loan. I don't often show this because I generally forget to, but we've got a good number of players out on loan. Hopefully we can get them out and give them first team football and send more players out on loan in the future. It's just really exciting to have the option that we've got players out on loan and game first team football and developing. We've also got the youth candidates and looks like we kind of have just three players that could be of interest, but it's better than nothing and we've still got a strong squad regardless. So as far as I'm concerned, that's the best news possible. So now we're going to go over the games we've had since the start of the season and we started quite well. 4-0, 3-0 no wins in the first two games. We then lost 4 3 to Kudabar of all teams. Before we won 2 against Bersic and then drew 1-0 against Rekaniki Nis, which is a bit of a disappointment. We then lost to Razors at home in the Europa Conference League first leg at home. And we then beat Novi Parza before we were knocked out of the fourth qualifying round of the Europa Conference League by Rangers. For the fourth year running, we failed to get to the group stage. We didn't score against Rangers. It's disappointing, but we did beat Vesleck in the next game before Predator Novi Sad were beaten as were Sankom and Bovedina. So good to see we could do well there. We then drew 0-0 against Red Star. And then Spartak Spartaka. Before we won, we won against Partizan. We then beat TAK by four goals to nil in the cup. Then Vosvet beat us 1-0. But we then beat Nopadak 2-0. TSC then held 2-0 draw. We beat Metalak 3-1. We got revenge on Kodabar by beating 5-1. Before Spartak Spartaka Beat us on penalties in the second round of the Serbian Cup. Not great. Pasek then lost 3 to us. Before Iniki Nis of all teams beat us 3-2. We then were held to a 0-0 draw by Novi Parza. So it's not been amazing to say the least. What is nice though is the fact we're in a tire fight. And I like the fact we can be in a tire fight since we've got 44 points in the first round of matches. We're only 4 points behind Partizan. But with 2 points clear Vuzdebek, we are 7 points clear of 4th and 5th, which is great. Red Star are done in 6th, and we are 11 points clear of the bottom half of the table, so that's great, and we're doing quite well for ourselves. Hopefully, we can do more and actually progress, because it'd be nice to do something productive, wouldn't it, now? So, let's see how this youth intake we had is like, because last year, it was rather pleasant. Can it be as good as that this year? So we're now at the development center on the 7th of March because again, for some reason, we've got another early intake and we've got five players already here. None of them are for my youth intake right now, though there are three names that pop up immediately. So we do have 23 players out on loan now and the fact I can say that with a straight face is great and we're literally able to just send players out on loan constantly. Some players haven't had first in football, but other than that, it's been productive to say the least. It's good to get first team football for some of the players who need experience going forward. But let's look at the youth intake, shall we? So, I like to think this is a decent intake and it could have been worse. But I'm only going to go through the four players that have four stars and above on potential racing. So, let's go for that. The first player is Zizan Ogradovic. And he's a left back who 
has low determination, low crossing and low dribbling, but could be a good fullback either way and has got good, good, good potential. He's also got a lot of players in his way, so it might be a struggle for him to get first in football, so hopefully he can develop quickly. So Marco Beljak is probably the player I'm most excited about, mostly because of his composure and finishing both being 15. His first has been 16, and he's a striker. Yeah, he's a striker, and he looks this good already. Now, he's not amazing. I'll tell you that much here and now, but he's good enough to be a third-tier player who I think could be a starter in the next couple of years. I really do. He likes to play one-twos and lobs a keeper, but honestly... He's exciting. If I can get in first team football and throw in the, on the first team pitch, I'll do that straight away. This is Alexander Milosevic, and I'm saying the last name wrong, I know that. But he's considered a promising attacking midfielder, and he's ambitious, which could be both good and bad. He's got 12 corner kick taking and 13 free kick taking, so I've got set piece specials now in the intakes, and that's promising. The last person I'm going to talk about is Vuk Simsic, and... Vuk Simsic is exciting. He's right back. So we've got two fullbacks in the end, a striker and a attacking midfielder. But he's got potential to be really, really good. We need him to develop, but he's got great potential. And as far as I'm concerned, that's all we need to worry about here. So let's try and make him a superstar. Since we last met, though, we've only had about five games. We won three of them. Versek, Valentin of Assad, and Vofidino have all beaten by 3-0 and 3-1 and 3-1. Stancom and Red Star... We both drew against them, 0-0, which is great because we're now starting to show that we deserve to be in the top half and we are constantly fighting for the title potentially. Can we get a title running? Yes, because we've already qualified for the playoffs. Unfortunately, Palestine have a given hand on us, so we picked up 11 points. Hopefully, we can keep going and in the next 11 games, do some damage. I think we can get second place this year. At worst, I think second place has got to be the aim now after what we've just done. And if we can keep this up, it'd be really, really good for our point of view. Can we do it though? Let's find out. So we're going to talk about the end of the season run. And we beat Sparta Spartica 1-0 to get revenge on them before we lost two games in a row. First to Partizan, then to Vustavec. Then Nepodak drew against us 1-0 before we lost to Red Star. We then beat Vostovac 1-0, drew 1-0 against Partizan, then lost again to Spartak but then won the last three games of the year. Nepodek, Fukui Stankum and Ratniki Nis all beaten in the league. It's just a shame that we only picked up one victory in the last 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 games before those last three games of the year. Did it cost us second place in the league? And how badly were we behind Partizan if they won the league? Well, we got second place, but we finished 20 points behind Partizan, who I think only dropped four points from where we last met up. They only dropped four points. I'm going to double check that's the case. I think they legitimately had the best run of their lives. I mean, look at this. This is ridiculous, isn't it? So they're also in the Europa League while doing this ridiculous run. They beat Renan Trey in the first knockout round of the Europa League. They beat Tottenham in the second round. And then they were beaten by AC Milan on penalties in the quarterfinals. They've got the cup final against Bursic of all teams as well. And I've just got to say, the fact that what, one of two teams to take points off them in... This is actually... Look how mad this is. Partizan, in all their glory, only failed to win twice in the league after the winner break. That is mad. That is ridiculous. And we're one of two teams to have got some points off them. Along with Metalak of all teams. But we took a point off them. We almost beat them if it wasn't for their 90th minute equaliser. Partizan are on a different level. My god. But yeah, no wonder we didn't get to be that close to them. The fact they only dropped four points after the winner break is crazy. We just about finished ahead of Red Star and Spurs Spur to go. Wolfsburg, I think, lost their last three games of the year, if I recall correctly. But, yeah, they comfortably got fifth place. Partizan, if they beat Wolfsburg, will definitely ensure that Wolfsburg are in Europe next year. But, yeah, we're in the Champions League. So, we got that going for us, I suppose, which is better than nothing. Season review, though. Let's look at this and let's expose what we had done. So, we sold Rakovic, or let him go to a club in Hungary. We then let a load of young players out uh, on a permanent basis. None of them... Older than 18, and none of them for more than 29k. We kept our best players, quite frankly, that's great. 
Loans out, we let a lot of players go on loan, and I think we've done well for ourselves here. We may have also got some of our affiliate clubs promoted. I, I'm going to double check this as well, but let's go over this first and foremost. So seeing the results, we actually went third place going into the last seven games. Vulstavec, who finished in fifth, by the way, only picked up four points in the last seven matches. So I thought my run was bad. Vulstavec had a nightmare run. We got second place, and we completely did so. We just need to do better in the cup. So Rangers beating us in the qualifying rounds is a pain. And then to lose on penalties to Spanish Republic is not ideal. We didn't consider a single goal though in normal time, which is promising. 5-1 win against Colabao was the biggest win. Max Zimmer was a 4-0 victory in the first game of the year against TSC. And the goal of the season was actually scored by my winger, who I've turned to a right back in Musija. So let's watch this goal. This is the Musija goal and... That is a ridiculous free kick. There's not much else we can really say. I've turned into a right back and I think he suits the role. Is that mad? I think he can suit the role. Look how much he's improving as well, by the way. Is this promising winger? I see promising fullback personally and he just suits the role. He really suits the wingback role and he already knows how to play it. So why not use him there? Finances, sponsorship went up, but everything else went down, which is fine. We're making 271k for merchandise, which is also great. We're still a three-star team, which is perfect. Vatramovic, Mesetovic, Meditic, Vukatic, and Kodata are the top shirt sellers. Vukatic also did something impressive this year, and I'm going to show you that after this. Team of the year was this, and yeah, the front three were the three, were the three players that let us down this year, which is surprising. And yes, Zikovic, I started to really drop out of the team towards the end of the year, but he still did a 7.12 average rating, which is perfect. The fact it's the front three letting me down is a bit concerning. Accolades. You remember what I said about that young striker who I said I want to get into the first team, get into the uh, some chances in the first team? He scored in his debut at the age of 15 years, 184 days. Guess who he scored against? He scored against Partizan on his debut, and I'll show you that goal in a bit. Flag awards. We got the fan player of the year, young player of the season with Milosevic, who I think is a legend at this point. Milosevic was the top goal scorer. Musijal was the goal of the year. Book got the most assists with nine. Ozo got four player of the match awards. And Milosevic getting the 7.3 average rating is great. Jed Rannin actually started playing as a DM and made 125 passes per 90. That's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Lazar Persic is also retired at the end of the year. He's made 470 appearances. And Milosevic has now got 126 league goals. Club expectations. It's kind of the same, but now officially they want me to get the top half. I think the players want me to be more ambitious though going forward. And now we're in the Champions League finish after finishing second place. We need to do better and better and better. Can we do more? Also, this is the goal we're going to talk about. You know the goal from Beljak. Kodata is a nightmare. Plays it in the middle and Beljak on his debut of 15 years, 184 days as that. Scores against Partizan, gets the lead, and it was that 90 pin equaliser that stopped us to be the first and only team to beat Partizan in the wind, after the winter break. And that's ridiculous. That's my lineup, effectively, for this. And I started rotating my team a lot and figure ideas what I can do and trying to prove them. But it's amazing what we can do at this point. It really is. And what happened in Europe in the other competitions? Let's find out. So, we're back, and we've actually seen the relegation playoffs happen, and Vesic have survived. Yes, they actually had a relegation playoffs before they had their cup final against Partizan. Whether or not they won that, I don't know yet. But but enough is said, we're beaten. So they're relegated to the second tier again. So it shows you just what's happening. But I think Volfadina being relegated is a shock to the system. Volfadina are actually relegated in the first season of the save. So it's not the biggest shock in the world in that regards. But who went up to replace the three teams going down? So the teams going up are Danica and Broderick along with Modest Lucina. Now, Broderick being promoted means that they will not be our affiliate club next season, which means we're going to have to find a new affiliate for next year. But the clubs that we have affiliated with are actually quite good teams at this point. Most of them are in the second tier if they're not in Serbia, which is really, really useful to say the least. We still have Monaco. I am still, I'm in the army about this one. I might actually get rid of the affiliation with Monaco next year, or at least in the summer. But both Derek being promoted is good for them, but it also means that we will not be able to send players to them as quickly or as often as we had them. But if anything, they might still take players from us if we offer them out. So who knows? Nitra have gone back to the second tier of Slovakian football. 
they're still a half star team, but they actually finished in ninth place, which is really useful as far as I'm concerned. Cabell are semi professional and in a non playable league, which is fine, but looks like Levesque are in the second tier of Bulgaria. I've only been there ever since we became the parent club. They did do rather well, I think. Okay, they had a really bad run of form towards the end, but they have taken some of our players on loan. They finished in 10th. Still top half, just not as close to the promotion places as I thought they would be at the end of the day. They did win the last game of the year. Repensia, Tomasura in the second tier of Romania actually did rather well. They were, well, I say, they didn't do very well in this part of the season, but they did win enough to get in the Champions playoffs, which is better than nothing. And tells me that, yes, they were good enough to get into the top half in the first place. And yeah, top six team, that's a good season. What I forgot about the remaining leagues is that you only have, what, you play each other once, and then you go to the next group thing, which is still a strange concept to me. But there you go. And I feel in Romania, finishing the top six is good for our point of view. So I'm being a non-playable league, and amateur is not ideal, but what can you do? And these are Hungarian affiliate, which is a two and a half star team, did okay. Then the second tier, after missing out on being in the second tier for a while, they finished in 13th place, which is great. They've just been promoted in the last couple of years, and they actually started the save in the playable league, but just had really bad runs or something. They actually finished in 19th in the 2033-34, so the fact they're back in the playable leagues and doing well is really useful. I'm just hoping they stay in the playable leagues because I really want them to be doing well. They've never finished higher than 8th so far, but if we can get them to be finishing in higher positions and then actually transfer for the playoffs and promotion, that's great. It'll be good for our point of view and it'll help us long term, I think. So let's now talk about the players and we need to start talking about Dunev Vukatic who actually did so well this year that he got 5th place in the next gen award and is considered potentially our best player now. Only issue is he's going to want a new contract which has got a low release clause. I'm going to show you this myself because I can at this point. But yeah, agent's going to force this in. If I try to negotiate it, it's, gonna just, it's not going to go anywhere. I'm disappointed with that. So I need to figure out a way to avoid the release clause for the 17-year-old. I do have a replacement in mind, though, who can come in if he is to leave us, which is fine. But yeah, Strugoslav being here is good. He's actually a top-tier player now, which is very, very good. He's won by Stancombe, but he's considered a top-tier player. And then you got Serhi Gaidash, also very good young talent, 17 years of age. He's probably a third tier player. Yeah, oh, second tier player, actually. That's even better. But he's considered a good player for the division, and we could be very exciting for the future, I think. To ride back, I've got Zikovic, who is good, but I've actually been using other players now in his position. And the likes of Ibrahim Musija, I mentioned earlier, he's now kind of been made the right back of the team. I wasn't planning on it, but he's actually done well enough that he's now considered the best right back out and out that we can use there, which is really, really useful. And they got. Bubic, who's also very useful there, and I think out of the three players we've got playing there, could be very good in the long term. And yeah, three young talents. One of them being a 26, though, so I think Zikovic could be forced out of the team by the young talents coming through, which is a bit of a shock to me, but I'm not complaining. So Mininovic is really a good player that I'm excited about. He's still 24, can still improve. He's a good player for the division now. We need to make sure he does better and better going forward. But we have the likes of... Menzanovic, who I have been giving first in football every now and again, nine appearances this year. He's a second tier player now, but again, exciting times for us if he's able to get to the potential we believe he can and actually be better than Menzanovic. We do have the likes of Josip Mosic, who actually sent out on loan to Romania. He got first in appearances last year, so he's part of the team that actually got into the Champions Playoffs last year abroad, but he's just not good enough for what I'm looking for right now, so he needs the first of his spirits, I think, to go elsewhere. And yeah, we need to give him first and foremost elsewhere, I think, going forward at this point in time. So we do have this guy. And I think the fact that this guy is probably considered better than our next choice that I just mentioned is concerning. But Dijan Odbradovic is a good signing and a good player that come through our youth academy. So it's good to see him doing well here. The fact that I can say this with a straight phrase right now, it says a lot. But Mirko Milosatovic is... Probably about to lose his spot as the best defender in our team. And he is considered a good player. Yeah, he's starting to lose his quality a little bit. I'm giving him new contracts regardless though. But I'm going to talk about this guy, Nadat Olovic, who I've been playing as a midfielder. 
And I know what you're thinking. He's not a midfielder. He's more of a defender. But he's been able to rotate and come in when he needs to because of injuries. He can play as a DM, can play as a midfielder. But as a centre-back, he is very exciting. And if it wasn't for his jumping reach and his heading, his bravery, I'd probably say he's the best centre-back we have right now. But I can see him play as a midfielder as well, which is useful. And we then got him and Hozo. It's kind of a no contest to say why I'm excited about what I have right now by disposal. Hozo's now at Boston International at the age of 26. It took him a long time to get there, but he's finally done it. We also got the likes of Radoslav Murda, who is still a good player for this division. It's not bad at all. Doesn't have big matches, is inconsistent, but he's definitely a good player for this division, which makes the rise of the other players come through is a bit concerning. And you got Ivan Vukotic, who again is exciting as a centre back. He's 17. And then you got the likes of Milit, uh, then you got the likes of Nikolic, again, exciting centre back. And then you got this guy who I can play as a centre back. I know you guys mentioned he's probably a better centre back than a midfielder. And I can see it, but he's very much improving. And I've been playing as a deep line playmaker. And I think he's taken to the role quite nicely. He's come from the bench a lot. And because of the fact that. He's only got Cologne there ahead of him. It works for him. I'm not going to talk about Cologne now because we can just literally jump into that. But Cologne being our best deep line playmaker in the team. 25, good player. We're starting to look like a team that Jenny needs to improve, but we've got lack of options to improve the team with. And then we've got this guy coming through. Very exciting young talent. We've got Veliko Drogovic as well, who's exciting. I see deep line playmakers well on him. 15 passing is the main reason for it. But yeah, it's just exciting to see what we can do with him. It really is. And that's not even talking about Vladislav Jako, who I want to be excited about. I want to say he's going to be amazing, but the fact he's not impressed me and actually annoyed me at one point with the fact he was upset with the fact I criticized him for his training. I realized this guy needs to be taken out of the first team. He's not good enough for what I'm looking for. It's just a shame, but I have to say that. Center midfield, I am looking at Bajramovic, and I think that Olovic might have taken his spot as the best center midfielder now. And that's weird to say the least, but Bajramovic is still exciting to me. He's one of those players I really want to give in the first team, keep in the first team, but he's 29 now. He's got 19 gets for Bosnia. The fact he's 29 means he might be losing his spot first team at first and foremost. Dija Rakitic, though, I think I've already replaced. And I think Rakitic been 30 and only considered a decent player and two and a half star player i think might have lost his spot in the first team especially when we got the likes of i got petrovic in the team already and petrovic was our best center midfielder then olovic coming in and saying yeah i can play both midfield positions and a defense and a center back position it says a lot just how much has changed and the fact we've got kodata also to play the position as well is kind of says a lot for me but I'm now going to talk about the right winger position and Bovan Vesanandovic has kind of made the position his own and it's not a joke either. I genuinely didn't think it would be the case, but we might not be able to play the inverted winger role again with this guy in the team. I know he started 13 games and he made 16 appearances on the bench. He got 10 goal contributions in the league. So this guy's exciting and I don't know what else to say that in that regards. And with Milos Jovanovic being the player I've really want to build a team around in that position not really exciting me not really impressing me it's concerning that he might have just lost his spot in the first team as in veteran on attack i want this guy to be very good for me but he just hasn't impressed me enough and i think velasazovic might have just taken his spot in the first team there and it's one of many areas i think we need to strengthen in the future we also sent marko popovic out on loan to bulgaria he got five goals in one month I think he's played as a striker. The fact he can say that, and we can now say, okay, striker and a winger is exciting. His low determination is still an issue, but look at the arrow. Look at the improvements he's made out in Bulgaria. I might just send him out there again and say, do what you did last year. Have fun. Do what you need to do. Also, speaking of field, I actually listened to you guys in the comments, and I remember you, one of you guys saying about Miroslav Nikotic, and I decided to make him a field, train to be a midfielder, he can play as a box to box or a Mazala, which is the two roles I use. He's very inconsistent, yes, but he's got potential. And I think maybe send him on loan at the age of 18 if he doesn't get uh, good enough to be started for us. 
But yeah, he's very exciting. He can play in four different roles. Might not be the smartest move I've ever made, but he's got consistency. If he can improve his if he can improve his consistency, we've got a talent there. The left winger, Vuk is still there. Didn't have the best season. I don't think this guy's ever had a good season for us. And that's concerning. I can say that with a straight face. But yeah, he needs to do better. He got 11 goal contributions and didn't really impress me that much at all. And now we've got the likes of Benimir Konatar being, you know, the first choice option on the left wing. He's made the role himself. He's also a natural winger. So do I switch up from inverted winger to normal winger? Or do I just keep up with the passage of, okay, maybe we can get a winger. Maybe we could just use a left-sided player as an inverted winger or not. I don't know. I need to figure this one out and work out for myself, but... It's an option I need to work on and whether or not I can work with it, I don't know yet. I also sent Marko Jesapovic out on loan to Hungary and he got four goal contributions in 11 matches. Admittedly, he only started four times, but the fact he got four goal contributions and three of them being goals is useful. He wasn't getting called up for the Montenegro national team and I think, okay, if he's getting the warning signs, he's not going to get called up. Because of the lack of game time, I thought I need to give this guy an opportunity to go out alone and get some contributions so he can get development and so he can get caught up for the Montenegro uh, squad. So hopefully I helped him with that regards. Minitic is our record goal scorer. 126 goals in the league in 297 appearances. It's amazing that a man with 9 finishing and 12 composure could do this well. But yeah, again, 17 league goals in the league. It's very good. The fact he's only had what? Four seasons he's not scored double figures in for us at all is ridiculous. And the fact he's still got only a 6.99 uh, average rating is concerning. But again, he's had some games where he goes missing and he has some games he just turns up and destroys everyone in his path. It's ridiculous. He also had a few injuries as well, but the guy's ridiculous at times. But Markovic again, this guy is a decent player for this division. I'm actually considering this and this is maybe mad. But I'm considering sending this guy out on loan at some point, even though he's 23, isn't going to get much better. I don't know, this guy, there's something about him, I wanted him to be good. I might have just hindered his development by not really sending him out on loan before. But 35 goals in 133 matches, he got 8 goals this year in 15 appearances. I barely put him on the pitch at the best of times, when Militich is amazing. But he got five, he got 8 goals with a 5.45 uh, uh, XG, so the guy can be amazing at times. I just... I'm not really using him a lot, and that might be to his own to my own detriment at this point. And then I'm just going to talk about this guy, Marco Beljak, as already sun improving, promising striker, professional. He's already got quicker. He had an acceleration of seven when he's turned up. He's now got an acceleration of eight, and we've got players that could be really good. We've got Dusan Rasic, who actually used this year partly. Didn't get a goal, but he came from the bench a few times. Wasn't that special. I'm probably going to sell this guy if I'm completely honest with you. It says he could be better, a good left winger of all things, but I just don't see this guy do much for me. We do have the likes of Zoan Pandurovic as well, who is 17, very consistent, but I don't know. It's, it's one of those things where I think this guy could be amazing, but I'm not sure if I can really give him the first thing for he needs. The same with Dorze Durovic as well. It's one of those things, I've got a lot of young talent that could be exciting in the striker role, in the winger role, but I'm not sure if I can use him a lot. The fact we've got another promising striker in mid description for this guy is good, but I need to find out a way to let them develop. I think keeping them at the club until they're 18 and then send them out loan is the way to go for these players, but I need to figure out the way to do it first and foremost, and if we're going to do well or not. But there you go, that's my thoughts on the players right now. In the end, though, I'm going to talk about the Cups. And the Serbian Cup was won by Partizan. 3-0. Comfortable for them. The Europa Conference League was won by Wolfsburg. They beat Bryson on penalties in the end, which is good for their point of view. Juventus ended up beating Roma in the Europa League finals on all Italian final. Even they couldn't screw that one up. But hey, who could have seen this coming? An RB Leipzig Man United final with RB Leipzig beating United in the Champions League final. It's exciting to see this sort of thing happen in football merger. Whether or not that actually happen in the future, I don't know. Especially when RB Leipzig have yet to win the Bundesliga in a save. But there you go. Marco Silva has won the Champions League with RB Leipzig. Anyway though, I'm going to end this here. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys like and share this video and like subscribe to the channel. It really does help me a lot. Do you think we're able to keep our best players after we've got the Champions League next year? And do you think we can finally top a partisan in the league and actually win the league for the first time in the save? 
in the next five seasons if we get that far in. But until next time, goodbye and well, good night.